this video is going to be looking at the last section of topic 6, energetics, in the IAS edXL chemistry course. We're going to be looking at bond enthalpy and mean bond enthalpy, what these mean and how we can use them in calculations. So we're going to start off by looking at the actual definitions of bond enthalpy and the understanding the limitations. We're then going to be able to use the mean bond enthalpies to calculate the change of our reaction. And then we're going to give some information about how easily our bond can break and therefore how rapidly a reaction can take place at room temperature. So bond enthalpy is the enthalpy when one mole of a bond is broken and it is in the gaseous state. So again, Linking back to our previous definitions of enthalpy changes, it is to do with one mole. And in this case, we are looking at the bonds that are broken and they have to be gases. This is another definition that you do have to know. So an example might be, like we see here, we have two chlorine molecules. The energy it takes to break that is 243 kilojoules per mole. If we have two hydrogens, it is 436. And if we have a hydrogen and a chlorine, it is 432. For any polyatomic molecules, each bond has to be considered separately because every carbon-hydrogen bond, for example, is going to have a different bond enthalpy value. So it can depend on the nature of the carbon-hydrogen bond or the carbon-carbon bond. Whichever bond it is will vary depending on the molecule that it's being broken in. So because we can have this variation in our bond enthalpy depending on the environment, what we typically do is we look at what we call the mean bond enthalpy. And again, this is another definition that we have to know. And this is the enthalpy change when one mole of a bond averaged out over lots of different molecules is broken. So for example, if you take methane, we have four carbon-hydrogen bonds here. Now, when we break the first one, we're going to see a, a specific bond enthalpy. When we then break the second one to re remove a hydrogen, then we see a slightly different bond enthalpy. And let's have a look at the numbers. So when we break CH4 down to the CH3, then we have a bond enthalpy of 423. When we're then breaking the second carbon-hydrogen bond, we have 480. The third, 425, and the fourth, 335. So what we do is we take the mean value for that. So the enthalpy, or the bond enthalpy for the CH bond in methane is averaged out to be approximately 416 kilojoules per mole. Now, when it comes to using bond enthalpies or mean bond enthalpies, you will always be given the data that you're going to need to work with. So they will give you a table that may look something like this and it will show you each of the bonds and it will give you their mean bond enthalpy. And we have that over lots of different molecules and different environments. So you're not expected to calculate these. And the way that we would show it is we write E, then the bond in brackets, and then we write the value. So you can see that notation at the bottom here. So enthalpy changes can be calculated using these mean bond enthalpies and we have to do three things. The first thing we have to do is we have to calculate the sum of the bond enthalpies of the bonds that are broken. And that's what this says here. So this symbol is the Greek letter sigma and it just means sum of. We then have to calculate the sum of the bonds that are made. So again, using this notation here. And then in order to calculate the actual enthalpy change, we use this equation. So we take the sum of the bonds that are broken and we subtract the sum of the bonds that are made. Remember, breaking bonds is an endothermic reaction because we require to put energy in. And making bonds is an exothermic reaction. So let's look at an example here. <clears throat> We've got a hydrogen molecule reacting with a chlorine molecule to form two hydrogen chloride molecules. So the bonds that are being broken, first of all, well, we have the two hydrogens breaking 
and the two chlorines breaking. And you can see that we're given the data here and we have our sum shown here. So 436 plus 244. What we form is two HCl bonds. Now, notice that we do make two of them, so we have to take that into account. So we actually have two times 432 for our bonds made. And then we do the number of bonds broken, subtract the bonds made, and we get an enthalpy value of 184 kilojoules per mole. And you can see it has a negative sign, which tells you overall this is an exothermic reaction. Now, sometimes we can be given the enthalpy change of the reaction and we are then asked to determine the mean bond enthalpy. And all we have to do is we just substitute the known values into our equation and then we simply rearrange it to determine the bond enthalpy that we're trying to work out. So if we look at an example, we want to figure out the bond enthalpy for the carbon to carbon double bond and ethene and we're given a number of different values here. So first of all, we have we have the equation. Then we're given our bond enthalpies, and then we are given our total enthalpy. And we can use all of these values in order to be able to calculate this. So we look at the bonds that are broken, but we know that we have to figure out the bonds between the carbon and carbon that breaks, and we break one hydrogen molecule as well. Now we don't know what the carbon to carbon bond is, of course, but we know that one hydrogen is 436. The bonds that are made, where well, we're gonna make a carbon to carbon single bond, and we're also going to make a carbon to hydrogen bond, so we multiply, so we make two of them, so we multiply that by two, then we add 347 to give us our total bonds made as 1173. And then we substitute everything in, and you can see the values here. So we have an enthalpy value of minus 147. That is equal to the bond enthalpy value for the carbon-carbon double bond, plus 436, minus 1173, and we rearrange it all, and we get a value of plus 590 kilojoules per mole. Notice that it is an endothermic value because it is the bond breaking. Bond breaking should always be endothermic. So if you get an exothermic reaction, you've done something wrong in your calculation and you should go back and check. So bond enthalpies can be used to predict which bonds are most likely to break first in a reaction, as well as how easy it is to break the bond. Now you will come back to this specifically in topic 10 and one of the core practicals when we are looking at halogenal alkanes. And you'll be able to find more information about that either through videos on this YouTube channel or you can have a look in the textbook. If we have bonds that have got high bond enthalpy values, they're going to require a very large amount of energy in order to break them. So we need to input large amounts of energy. So typically these bonds don't break easily. If we have low bond enthalpies, these only require a very small amount of energy in order to break them. So actually in a chemical reaction, they are most likely to break first. So these are going to be the bonds that are going to break very easily as opposed to ones that have got high bond enthalpies. So if we go back and we have a look here, we can see that we're probably going to have an easy break of our hydrogen bond, the bond between the two hydrogens, but even easier than that would be to break a carbon-carbon bond. So it all just depends on the bond enthalpy to tell us a bit more information about the ease of reaction. And the last enthalpy change um, definition that we have to know is something called the standard enthalpy of atomization. And this is the enthalpy change measured at standard conditions when one mole of gaseous atoms is formed from an element in its standard state. Now, sometimes we may use this value in order to be able to then calculate a bond enthalpy, and you actually come back to that 
in topic 12 when you look at something called a born haber cycle but for now you just need to know the definition and be able to show them uh, this happening in an equation so for example we have carbon as a solid being atomized or forming a gas and that requires 717 kilojoules per mole if we do it for sodium it requires 107 you can see a much smaller number there and one thing to notice about atomization is when we form one mole so if we have hydrogen for example we are only going to form one atom here so we have to take into account the fact that hydrogen and chlorine are both diatomic so actually we have to put a half in front of our value here so let's have a look at some past paper questions. We're going to look at the October 2018 paper where we're given a table of bond enthalpies and asked to determine the enthalpy change for the oxidation of hydrazine. So we want to start off by looking at the bonds that are broken. So we have one nitrogen-nitrogen bond, which is going to be 158. I have four nitrogen-hydrogen bonds. So I have 4 times 391, which is equal to 1,564. And I have one oxygen to oxygen double bond, which is 498. When I add up all of those values, I get 222 kilojoules per mole. Then I want to look at the bonds that are formed. So I'm going to make one nitrogen triple bond, which is going to be 945. And then I'm going to make OH bonds in water. Now there are two OH bonds in each water and I have two moles of it. So I'm going to make four OH bonds, which is four times 464, which is equal to 1856. If I add up all of them, I get 28. O1. And then my enthalpy is the sum of the broken bonds, subtract the sum of the bonds formed. So it is 2220, take away 2801, and I should get an answer of minus 581 kilojoules per mole. Notice that I have to have the correct sign. And I also have to have, of course, the correct value. So you can see we get our final answer here. Now, if we look at the June 2019 paper, this is a similar question, but there's a slight difference to it. If you notice that with the information that we're given, it is calculating an enthalpy of formation. So for the carbon, there isn't actually any bonds to break here. What we need to look at is the atomization. For the hydrogen, of course, we can be breaking the hydrogen bonds, but we don't have the bond enthalpy for this. What we do have is the atomization value. So when we do this, we're just looking at it slightly differently. So when we're looking at what is being broken, we're actually looking at the energy to atomize. So how do we do that? Well, we look at the carbon and we need four times 717 because that is our carbon we have four carbon molecules and that gives us a value of 2868 and then we have our enthalpy of atomization for half of a hydrogen molecule as 218 now i have four hydrogen molecules in total so four times a half is going to be eight so we need eight times 218 and that gives us 1744, giving me a total value of 4612 kilojoules per mole. Then I look at the bonds that are being formed. Well, the only bonds that I'm forming are a carbon to carbon bonds and also carbon to hydrogen bonds. And because it is a butene, we're going to form at least one carbon carbon double bond. So the one CC double bond 
is going to be 612. We also have two carbon to carbon single bonds, which is two times 347, which is 694. And then we have eight carbon hydrogen bonds, which is eight times 413, giving me a total of 3304. I add all of those values together and I get 4610. Again, there's no difference here in terms of the enthalpy. It's this time it's the sum of the atomization values instead of the bonds broken. Subtract the bonds formed. So that's 4, 6, 1, 2. Take away 4, 6, 1, 0. So I get a value of positive 2 kilojoules per mole. And you can see that's the answer that we get. That's everything for bond enthalpy that you need to know. Hopefully this has made sense, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And that wraps up energetics for the NXL course. We'll be moving on to talk about intermolecular forces on the next topic, so please check back on the YouTube channel for any other videos you might find useful.